Okay, welcome to part two. Um, like I said in the previous video, uh, what we're going to do in this part is pretty much just carry on from where we left off. So the first thing I'm going to do is go back to our code and we're going to go down here and we're going to write the code that's going to handle our errors. And after that we're going to deal with how to get the list of file names um, from the zip file. Because um, then we're going to need that to, well, I don't know, you'd, you'd need that for various things like validation and all that kind of stuff. Um, anyway, right, so what we need to do down here is show a success message if the form has been submitted and there have been no errors and otherwise we're going to show all of the errors okay so what we're going to do is first check to see if the form has been submitted now we could check to see if this exists again um, but that wouldn't be massively flexible um, I haven't explained this particularly well before so I think I'm just going to go over it again here um, the reason that down here we don't check for that again is that say we change the name of this here you would then have to change it here as well um, but if you check something else here you don't so we have this errors array which is only defined if this condition is true so we can just check for the errors array which should never change so what we do is check to see if the errors array is set and if it is we need to see if there have been any errors so the way we check to see if there have been any errors is using the empty function so if empty errors that means there are no errors otherwise there are errors okay so if, if there are no errors we're just going to output the success message so we'll just do a simple echo and we'll put the these in a paragraph tag for the sake of it really and this is just going to say your files have been uploaded uh, like that okay and then down here we're going to use a for each loop to loop over each error and output that to the screen so for each errors as error and we'll do the same again but with a um, slightly different way we're going to use the error variable instead of our own sort of manual content okay so that's that done so now we should be able to test this out and we will do that by going to our browser here and if I just reload this page oops I somehow typed a three don't know how I did that um, so I just browse for the file again, click test, click upload. We should see that your files have been uploaded, which they have. If I just do this again and pick the script, which is not a zip file, that's all you need to know about that file, you can see that we get this, that does not look like a zip file. Um, actually, there you go, you see the difference in time between that loading and the other thing loading. That's how long it took for my server to extract the zip file. Because obviously, obviously um, Actually, maybe not, because it's not quite sending the same amount of data. But, well, whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, what are we doing next? Oh, yeah. Uh, getting the list of files in the archive. So, this is not particularly an obvious thing to do, like I sort of mentioned in the previous part. So, I'm going to go over that here, and then we're going to have that message show what I did in the introduction, which is the following files have been uploaded. So, let's go back to our code, and then just up here, before we actually extract the files, we're going to list them all. Um, so we're going to create a new array to contain the file names um, and that will hopefully become obvious why we need to do that in a moment and this is just going to be called ex uh, extracted files and set this equal just to an array like so Okay. Um, and then what we need to do is find all of the files inside the, Z the zip file but just before we do that uh, I'm just going to do this which should hopefully become obvious in a moment. So what I'm doing there is just printing out the um, zip file object directly. What this will do is show us all of the properties that this zip file has. Okay, so let's just try that out and see what we get. So let's browse for our zip file and click upload and wait for it to upload. Okay, so there we go. So you can see we get these sort of, how many are there? Four? Four? Five. Five properties. Um, one of them being the file name, which we know about comment is just something to do with the zip file, zip files can have comments and that's where that be shown uh, the number of files is what we're interested in and that's this property here num files um, and you can see this just tells us that there are four files in this zip file which there are okay so we can use that to loop over each file so the way we do that is by using a for loop so let's go back to our code and just underneath this print underscore r we're going to use a for loop so we're going to say for uh, or while i no for i equals zero, 
and while that's what I meant to say while while i is less than that number of files which we get like so just increment i or pre-increment if you want to be proper about it okay so now inside this loop what we're doing is we're doing something for each one of the files in the zip file so here where the cursor is at the moment what we need to do is get the name of the file corresponding to this number i which is effectively like the offset from the top of the zip file if you like um, like the number down okay so the way we can do that is by using the uh, stat index um, method of the zip object so the zip object is the zip variable and it has the stat index uh, method and that's what these i's are by the way like the number um, it goes from the top to the bottom I think maybe don't quote me on that um, so it like represents one file so each one of, inside this loop each one of the numbers that I will be set to will represent one file so we just pass in that number to the function or the method and that should work so let's just get rid of that print R and let's use the print R on this instead and we'll see what that gives us so we go back to our browser and just hit refresh resend the data to have the file re-uploaded and hopefully there we go so you can see we get this sort of fairly monstrous looking array of data and if we just view the page source to get it in sort of plain text format you can see that this here is the information printed about file 1 this is about file 2 this is 3 and this is 4 so you don't have to worry too much about all this sort of stuff down here obviously the index is just the index um, so actually it looks like they are in file order oh no that's just gone looping upwards from zero okay. sorry <laughs> anyway the, thi the um, thing we're concentrated uh, no concerned with is the file name which is just this first one here name um, if you want to know what the rest of these do check out the php.net page for the stat index method if you just type stat index into the um, function search at the top it should come up fingers crossed on that one hopefully I haven't actually tried it but there you go um, I'm sure you can search anyway so what we need is the file name which we can get um, well from this information so we need to save this array into a variable so we can then access only one property of it so we're going to remove the print underscore r now because we've done with that so we're just going to create a new variable inside here called entry info and set it equal to that stat index and then down here we're going to use that to add to the extracted files um, array and we're going to be adding the name which is just entry info name like so so then underneath here if we just do a print underscore r of extracted files and reload we should now see a list of the four files in that array um, so fingers crossed that works and it does so you can see we have this array with four elements and each one is one of the file names that was in that zip file okay so let's go back to our code and we'll just use this array to well we'll remove the print underscore r first and then down here we're going to change our success message to include this array so instead of your files we're going to say the following files with a w this time have been uploaded and then we're going to have a list of files here so the way we can generate a list of files from that array is using the implode function I have a video entirely on this so I'm not going to explain it too much here um, essentially what it does is puts this first parameter between each element of the second parameter and returns that whole thing as a string so if we just use the um, extracted files array here oh, we don't need one of those and that needs to be like that this should generate a nice looking nice-ish looking list so for the final time let's reload the page and see if it works um, so it should load oops apparently not okay I spell extracted wrong um, extraced okay try again hopefully it'll work this time um, let's see yep there we go so you can see that we have the following files have been uploaded and then a list of the file names that were found inside that zip file 
Um, there are a couple of things obviously you need to be aware of because you don't necessarily know the file names before you extract them. Well, you do, but essentially um, the easy way to extract a file is to of dump the entire contents into the folder which is using that extract to method there are ways you can um, change the file name but um, you can look those up for yourself essentially this is the principle of it um, so obviously just the obvious thing to point out is that at the moment we're not validating these files at all um, so really what you should do at least is make sure they have the extension you want um, and then also just worth pointing out is that this extract to method you can pass in an array of file names to be extracted as the second parameter. Um, so you could first find the list of files, then validate each name, and then only pass in the ones that passed validation here. So yeah, that's just one way you could go about sort of securing this slightly. But um, that's not really the focus of this video. Um, the focus of this video was meant to be um, extracting files, and I think we've pretty much covered that. So that makes this the end. Okay, so thank you for watching and goodbye, I guess.